Welcome back everyone, my name is Jose Lizardo, 3ds Max Technical Specialist with Autodesk and this is the second video in a two-part video tutorial on how to generate, animate, and visualize Autodesk CFD data inside of 3ds Max 2016 Extension 2. So in the first video we saw to actually use Autodesk CFD to generate simulation data. Um, and in this second video now we're going to actually see how to bring that simulation data into Max and create some nice animations with it. So before I jump into the process and the steps to do so, I want to show you guys what uh, the result is actually going to look like. So this is a kitchen scene that we've been working with, um, and it's just got a tune shader uh, on all of the, all of the geometry to have uh, the black lines on the white uh, on the white geometry on the white background. And basically, we have uh, these splines here with these arrows animated along these splines to uh, to visualize the airflow within the room. This is basically what we're going to be able to achieve using the new features in Extension 2 for Max 2016. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump in. Uh, so back into my kitchen scene, the first thing that I need to do is actually bring in that uh, CSV file that we exported out of CFD right at the end of the video there. Um, so to do that, I'm going to come to the Create panel and come under Geometry Creation here and make sure I'm set to CFD as my category. And we have this Import Data node that I'm going to basically put into my scene. And before I um, input the CSV file, I need to make sure that this object is centered with the world of Max. So down here below the timeline, we have this X, Y, and Z spinners here. I can right click on a spinner and zero it out. So do that to offer all three X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to have to do this for every CFD object that I use inside of Max. They always need to be centered with the world. All right. So once uh, it is centered, I can click on the CSV file button here to load my CSV file. So I'm going to come to my libraries here, 3ds Max, into my kitchen study project that we created in CFD. And I have this design one folder. In here we have scenario one. In here we have a solver folder. And this scenario one nodal.csv is what was saved out of um, uh, Autodesk CFD. So I'm going to hit open here. Give it a second or two to load that data into my scene. So the data has been loaded, but we still don't see anything. The reason is because we need to turn on vertex ticks on the object properties. So I'm going to right click with the, with the object select, selected, go to object properties. We're going to turn on vertex ticks. And now we see the, um, the point cloud inside of my scene. So this is the data that was generated in CSV, in CFD, sorry. And every one of these points essentially on this point cloud contains the data that we simulated. In this case, it contains velocity and direction. This is all that we simulated. If we had simulated maybe some sort of heat study or something, temperature study, they would also contain that information in them. Um, so now that we've um, brought in our CSV data, we can actually convert this to an editable poly to lighten the scene up. Uh, if you wanted to keep this as a live object to be able to change the CSV file whenever you wanted, you wouldn't convert it to, to an editable poly. But in my current workflow, because I know I'm not going to come back to this, I can uh, convert this to an editable poly. So I'm going to right click and say convert to editable poly. And just to remove visual clutter from the view, viewport, I'm also going to go into object properties and I'm going to turn on display as box. All right, so that's the first step in the process, bringing the CSV data. The next step is to actually generate splines that are going to uh, represent airflow in the room. Um, so to do so, I'm going to come back to the create panel. This time under, under the shapes category, we have a CSV, uh, CFD um, drop down item here. So we're going to select our CFD spline paths object, put it in our scene. Again, we want to center it with the world. So right click on the X, Y, and Z spinners. And if you come to the modify panel, you see that this guy actually requires two sources of data or two inputs. The CSV file object that we created a little bit earlier, the point cloud, and the geometric object that will serve um, as the source for the splines themselves. So in my scene explorer here, I have this object that I'm going to unhide and show you guys what it is. Basically, it's just a piece of uh, a plane, a piece of geometry that has been modeled and positioned roughly above where the vents are. This is what you'd want to do in your scenes. And if I come into my vertex of object mode, you see that it has been subdivided this way. And basically, every one of these vertices is going to generate a spline. So if you want to have more splines for a more you know compelling visualization, then you would add subdivisions to these planes. Um, but keep in mind that with more subdivisions, things will slow down a little bit. 
So it's something to just keep in mind um, as you make your decisions on how these uh, splines will appear. So in this case here, I'm going to leave this as is. And I'm going to come back to my spline path object here and plug in the appropriate inputs. So for the CFD object, it's uh, this box object that we uh, set up a little bit earlier. So I'm going to select that. The path source is going to be this geometry that we have here above our vents. Give it a second or two and our splines will appear. There we go. And so the next thing is to adjust these values here in order to have splines appearing across our scene. So number of steps is the total number of segments that our splines will have. I'm going to increase this to about a thousand. So the number of samples um, is basically how many samples uh, do I look at to determine my next velocity. So if you increase this, you're going to essentially step through the velocity field a little bit more quickly. So I'm going to set this to about 30. And the step size is basically a multiplier um, for the resolution of your spline. So I'm going to increase that to about 4. All right, so as you see now, our splines have been generated and they are following the airflow in the room based on the point cloud CSV data that we brought in a little bit earlier. Um, so the next step here, um, and this is for, you know, to lighten things up a little bit, I'm going to convert this CFD object um, into a, an editable spline. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, convert to editable spline. This is going to make things a little bit lighter in the scene and a little bit more manageable. Um, I'm going to just turn on uh, make, making, making it renderable in the scene, maybe increase, or increase our thickness to about uh, two units there. Oh, two units is a little bit too much, so let's go down to 0 0.5. All right, so we have splines in our scene, and if I just isolate these guys to show you what they look like, these are the splines that have been generated. So what I want to do now is essentially have these splines, first of all, display the velocity information that is uh, present in the uh, point cloud data that we have there. And then I want to animate arrows going around these splines or following the path of these splines. So to make sure that, to, to be able to animate uh, arrows, first of all, we need to turn on generate mapping coordinates. It's very important. Um, and to display um, the velocity information in the viewport, we need to go to object properties and turn on vertex channel display. So right now they are set, uh, they, it has been set up, but we don't see anything right now because they have no information yet um, from the, um, the CSV data. So to do that, we're going to add a special modifier that is available in extension 2 called CFD Color Vertex Modifier. And basically this guy is going to plug to our point cloud that we brought in a little bit earlier, our velocity field. And then give it a second or two to refresh. All right, so you see now we're starting to get that uh, colored information from the velocity field. If I wanted to increase or boost this coloring a little bit, I can increase my red amount to maybe something like 500 um, and see what that does. And we see that the coloring has changed a little bit, but it's still not enough. So we can bump that up to 1,000 perhaps and see what that result will be. All right, so we're starting to have something that's pretty interesting. So the next step now is to add our arrows to the splines here and have them animate uh, throughout, uh, throughout the spline objects themselves. So I'm going to come to my material editor here and I'm going to just create a new uh, standard material. And basically I'm going to essentially just plug into my opacity map here a texture of an arrow. So if I come into my maps here, you see that I have this arrow texture. It's basically just a white arrow on a black background. This will serve as an opacity map. So whatever is white will be visible, will be colored based on the color information that are on the splines. Whatever is black will be invisible. So I plug that in and I'm going to apply it to our object and just uh, have it display in the viewport. Now we have this effect. So this is because it's not that great, obviously. And basically what's happening is those that uh, arrow texture is basically being tiled only one time across the entire spline, so it's being stretched. So to fix that, we can increase our V-tiling, uh, maybe 20, we can try that out. So 20 starts to look a little bit better. Uh, we can uh, reduce the stretching, maybe do it to 15, or in increase the stretching, I should say. So 15 is a, uh, is a much nicer um, value. All right, so the next step is going to be to animate these, uh, this, this arrow going down these splines. And by the way, I just want to mention that this, um, this workflow for animating these, this texture map across uh, these splines is a workflow that my colleague Louis Marcoux um, showed me, so I don't want to take credit for that. He showed me this really cool workflow, and this is what I want to uh, show you guys here today.
So be, before I animate these arrows, I need to make sure that I've collapsed the CFD color vertex modifier down to edible, uh, to an edible spline or edible poly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, convert it down to an edible poly. The reason is because if I try to animate with that modifier live, uh, it's going to be very, very slow. So now that I've collapsed that, I can come back to my material editor. And what I'm going to do essentially is turn on auto key, make sure that my um, my keyframe type is set to linear and not tangent, so we don't have ease ins and ease outs. And I'm going to go all the way to the end of my timeline, in this case my 120th frame, and I'm going to add a keyframe here of about 0. Point, let's try 0. 0.5. So if I close the material editor out and reset my timeline, I have this kind of effect now. If I want things to be speedier, I can uh, change or slower, I can change how I'm animating uh, by uh, changing the keyframe at frame 120 uh, from 0 0.5 to 1 or to 0 0.2 or whatever value that I want uh, to uh, generate the effect that I want. So that's basically it. That is essentially the process of bringing in CFD data and animating it inside of Max. There's a lot of other ways that you can do this. You can add objects to these splines and have those be animated rather than using textures. There's a few different workflows. This is just one specific workflow. I think it's kind of neat. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Uh, more to come. Uh, thank you very much.